This video shows how to rough turn the inside of a green soft maple bowl. As with anything in wood turning, remember you have to use all the proper safety equipment and safety procedures, especially face shields and safety glasses. Thank you. This video just shows how I rough turn the outside and inside of a bowl using a peeling cut. There are two important things to remember. First of all, you cannot sharpen a tool too much. If anything, sharpen it far more than you think you need to sharpen. The second part is, even though I am taking very wide cuts here, those cuts are rather thin so I'm not putting a lot of leverage on the workpiece so there's very little chance that I am going to lever that workpiece out of the chuck. This picture shows how you rub the bevel on the wood as you're turning. This is how you control the depth of the cut. This picture shows that the bevel is not rubbing on the turning. When you turn like this, the bevel tends to dig in and bounce out so you can't control the depth of the cut and you don't get a nice smooth finish. People ask about the angle of the bowl gouge as you're using it. The real answer is it constantly changes throughout the cut due to the fact that the grain and density of the wood can change all the way through the cut. The best way to describe it, it is like flying an airplane. You have to adjust the roll, which is the twist of the gouge, the yaw, which is the angle horizontally, and the pitch vertically. When you find the perfect roll, yaw, and pitch, the cut seems to be effortless. Okay. You got the tool and the pitch. Yep. Here I'm doing a peeling cut. Notice the difference in the shavings. Sometimes I get these beautiful curls coming off of there and sometimes I get nothing but dust. That's because I am changing the roll, pitch, and the yaw as I'm going through. There is this dust. Now it's turned to shavings. You notice I've changed the angle on the yaw and a little bit of twist in there. Notice how it changes. First thing I want to do is flatten the flip face. Just clean it up so it's nice and flat. It's nice to start your cut with a flat surface rather than one that's bouncing the tool all around. And that's all I need to do to get that cleaned up. I'm just ripping the wood off. I don't really care. Next I'm going to rough turn or turn the outside so it's nice and round. It's nice to have a nice round surface to work to rather than just start cutting away. Now normally when I'm doing this, I do it from the opposite way. I'll move my 
floor restaurant like this. The reason I moved around the opposite way and cut from this side is just so I can throw all the shavings in one pile instead of a pile behind me and a pile beside me. the outside is round. So now I'm going to do the outside of the bowl. And I'll start with my tool rest angled a little bit and just take some rough cuts. Now I have the outside of the bowl all roughed out. I'm going to put my tenon on now. I always use a 4 inch tenon because a 4 inch tenon is four times as strong than a 2 inch tenon and it also locates on a larger area or larger surface area in the chuck so it will run truer when I turn it around to do the inside. Just a little bit smaller. And I've got the outside of the bowl all roughed out. So my next step would be to finish turning the outside of the bowl and all I do is resharpen, take one last cut, and it's done. I'm going to explain what happens in wood turning by using a hand plane. You're always supposed to rub the bevel on a hand plane and that actually controls the depth of the cut and stabilizes the wood turning gouge as you're cutting. So think of the bevel as the sole of a plane and of course the cutting edge is a cutting edge. And by using a hand plane you can control the depth of the cut. Now by the same token I can use a wood chisel just like a gouge. I use the bevel here to control the depth of the cut. But if I get off the bevel and try to cut it just digs in. So I have to use that bevel to stabilize the cut. The next thing we want to think about is roughing. When we are rough turning anything, what's happening is we are peeling the wood away or what is called scrub planing with wood or with uh, hand planing. This is a scrub plane 
and it has a arced iron on there and that iron allows it to take a very aggressive cut and it focuses all the cut just in one spot and this is just for roughing whereas a smoother plane you would move it with the grain a scrub plane is used is designed to be used at an angle like that or even straight across the wood and it is designed just to remove a lot of wood fast as when you're roughing. Another way to look at how the uh, gouge works is by doing this type of cut. The nose angle or the nose cutting edge on a bevel cuts a little groove like this just ahead of the wing of the tool. So it's just cutting through the side of the grain. The wing of the tool then does a peeling cut and just allows that wood to be peeled off very quickly and evenly. And that exact is exactly what a peeling cut is in wood turning. Now I'm ready to do the inside of the bowl. Again, I'm going to finish cleaning up this face. Now by cleaning up the face, when I start my cut, the tool isn't going to be bouncing around on that interrupted cut, it'll start nice and smooth. So I'm going to take my initial cut just like I would to do the inside, but I'm going to change it just a little bit. Okay, there I started the inside. Now if you refer back to when I was doing the outside, remember I was taking cuts like this and just peeling the wood right off. I'm going to do the outside cut on the inside now, get rid of a lot of this waste. The cut is exactly the same. The advantage is now I don't have to lean over the lathe to do all those inside cuts, I can do most of them just like I'm doing the outside. So, I'm going to take the same cut as I would on the outside. The surface of the cone is going to be nice and smooth, but inside here the surface is going to be rough. But this is just a roughing cut, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do that same peeling cut I did on the outside, only I'm going to do it on the inside. of doing it this way is if I did it over here I would be leaning over the lathe but over here I'm standing up straight just like I did on the outside of the bowl and it's easier on my back. Now the problem with turning a bowl the normal way, when you get all the way down here and it's turning a lot slower and it's a lot harder to get a cut, but if I do the peeling cut, it just is effortless. So to continue the cut, I'll continue like I'm normally doing the inside of a bowl. I go a little bit 
deeper. Now I'm ready to switch back over to my peeling cut. Again, I continue with my usual uh, cut on the inside. Now that my tool is hanging way over the end, the extra length on the handle gives me a lot better leverage so I can can control it better, but I can also do this now. I can just turn the tool rest closer to the inside and go on through just with my peeling cut and go back to my turning uh, inside turning cut and I'll finish it up. gets down small like this, Stuart Batty has a different tool, he calls it the bottom feeder, and it's sharpened at a different angle and it cuts very differently, but it cuts a lot easier than trying to follow through the cut with the standard bull gouge. But I found all I have to do is another peeling cut, and I don't have to change the tool, I can now finish it with my regular bull gouge. But, Remember what I did on the outside? My final cut, I sharpened the tool. So I am going to sharpen the tool and take another cut. And now, with a nice sharp tool, I'll take my finished cut. And by using a nice sharp tool, it not only cuts better, but it leaves me a very smooth finish, one that I can start sanding with 180, if not 220 grit. And that's all there is to doing a bowl.